Well done. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, seeing that we have a quorum, I'm going to call this meeting to order. This is the Thursday, October 21st meeting of the Elementary School Building Committee. And we're conducting the meeting virtually. So I need to go to the people I see on the screen to make sure all the committee members can see and be heard. And I'm just going to call out people's names and just indicate that you're here and you can be heard. Sean? Here. Paul? Here. Mike? Here. Phoebe? Here. Jonathan? Here. Ben? Here. And Rupert. I am present. Oh, great. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And we also are, um, as per the agenda that you saw, we're starting out with a discussion of the beginning framework for a web page for the project. We're joined by Margaret Wood, who's our Everyone knows Margaret from Answer, our project manager, and Carolyn Kendall from Answer. And I think, Carolyn, you're out in Colorado. So Carolyn got up early this morning to join us. And that's the first item on the agenda. So um, unless other people have any questions or comments, I think we'll roll right into that item. Is, is everyone good to go? Yes. Right. So and just, and I just want to make sure yeah. every Margaret, sorry, I didn't mean, and everyone, the next meeting, and I'll say this at the end, will be on November 4th after the MSBA, and I will post that, but that will be mainly to report on what happened at the MSBA, and then there will probably be a, a couple other non-urgent that fitted in, but that's the next meeting. So, Margaret, sorry to cut you off. So just to recap from last week, so um, Caroline, who is our design guru, has put together this draft of the website. It's based on the um, anticipated look of the uh, new district website, which is going to be rolled out shortly. Mike, I think it was the 20th we said last week. It's tomorrow. So, to, yeah, it's tomorrow the 21st. So. Um, will look a little bit different from the website that you're familiar with the district, but it's it's using the branding of the new, the branding sort of uh, components of the new website. And it's a, it's a standalone page. So it's, and Caroline can explain technically a little bit more about this. So it's not on the district site. It's not on the town site. We'll need to link it to those, but we will manage it. We will be uploading the material. We'll be sort of, we're consulting with the building committee about what to put on it. So Caroline, why don't you say hello and show us what it might look like. Good morning. <clears throat> Let me pull it up here for you. Can everybody see my screen? We can. Wonderful. Okay, great. So we have set up uh, the drafted template through the Wix platform. It's a much user, much more user friendly platform for the masses to get in and edit as needed. So the idea was to, to make, um, make it accessible. So here's just a drafted landing page. And the idea was to kind of illustrate where we're at in the MSBA process, have some links to uh, the previous background page and um, some of the MSBA process uh, background information. And then as you can see, the top bar is the navigation pane. Uh, I'll just flip through each of the pages so that you can see these can obviously be modified and customized um, as the project progresses, but uh, just kind of templated out for the meantime. Meeting minutes, these will all be linked, but um, these will each be set up as a button. Similarly, presentations, we haven't loaded anything in here yet, but the 
same thing. These are all being set up as buttons. And if you want additional information, you can uh, provide that. We'll have a frequently asked questions page and then the project team as well. And these can of course have links to web uh, email addresses or however we would like to set that up. And then a contact page, which will uh, send an email out to Margaret directly, make it easy to contact. So pretty simple at the moment, but just drafted to provide an idea of the direction that we were going with it. And um, AmherstBuildingProject.com is available as a domain, so we can set it up that way. Sorry, Carolyn, I think last week we, Paul made the point that it needs to say school in it. So was it Amherst Building Project or was it Amherst? Oh. And her school project, sorry. School Amherst project, school. yeah. Yeah, I think we don't want to use building project because the town has got other building projects in the works. Yes, okay. Um, I want to just um, pick up from what Carolyn was saying and show you some examples. These are actually examples Kathy found when she was researching um, OPMs that gives some examples of materials that are on, can you, I think have been successfully used on other websites. So let me just grab this page, show you. Okay, can everybody see that? So, um, so this is um, a web page for from a project in Tisbury. Th this project actually had a. Um, uh, is sort of in its second cycle like you are. So they had a public vote and they're rebooting. But one of the things that they did that I thought was very successful, I mean, we'll have similar um, ability once we start design to post meetings and events, but they also, um, I won't play these right now, but if you wanted to go and look at them, they have some um, kind of online interviews, I guess, for lack of a better word, with members of the community, the school, there's a teacher, a parent, and I think a longtime um, elder member of the community who spoke in some of these um, links about um, why they thought the project was important. So I think that's a sort of interesting possibility. This is a project that's in construction now. So you can see that most of this one is really showing uh, periodic updates on the construction process. This is one also in construction. Let me see if I can find it. This is one I think that's kind of interesting where they have a timeline on the, it's a timeline mostly takes up the whole first page. Um, and I might do this in a horizontal, in a landscape rather than a vertical format. But, you know, this is, this is very like um, in Boston, the Boston Public Development uh, develop, development Authority, the, what's called BUPTA now, has something very like this for projects where you can see a timeline. And then um, here's another one where, um, you know, there's sort of more of a newsy uh, use of this page to put the public presentation links right on the first page. So um, this the page that Carolyn's drafted is really a, um, a scaffold for uh, the content that we will put in there uh, at, uh, going forward. And it will, get, it will get richer over time, but we wanted you to see the, the scaffold version, version. Can we go back to that scaffold version again? Because it, yes. it was very quick. It'd be nice to be able to, to spend yeah. a, a few more seconds kind of looking at it and absorbing it. And we can share um, the feedback link where you can provide comments directly into the page too. It's kind of a nice feature in the Wix platform. So others should do what uh, Jonathan just did, um, any or raise hands. Either way, uh, we do this pretty informally. I mean, one question I have, Caroline, is: Can you 
wherever this is, can we look at it later after we leave yes. this meeting? Yes, okay. Yes. Absolutely, I'll share that link at the end of the, the meeting. Kathy, can I ask a quick question? Sure. Where would, um, where would something like the educational plan or, um, or some of the other like major reports that we have to put together for the MSBA, would they go under project design? Yeah, so I think um, it's a great question, Sean. I think one of the things that this doesn't exactly make space for, but I would put in project design is the submittals to the MSBA. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit more when we get to the um, schedule discussion yeah. this morning. But um, the very first submittal to the MSBA is actually the ed program. And it is, it is, it drives, the ed program drives the design. So I would put that in project design and I would okay. note it as a submittal. Okay, good. Okay. Jonathan? I, I was almost wondering if, if big milestones like that shouldn't really have their own tab. I'm just wondering if the people in the, you know, in the general public will know to look, for example, under, under project design for something like that. I, I'm not opposed to putting it in project design, but I'm just trying to think that as we put stuff in categories that we think as, as much as a lay person might think when, about how to find stuff. Well, we could add a tab between um, presentations and FAQ that would be submittals. So some of these pieces, some of these pieces might appear in more than one place, but I think it would be a good idea for people to be able to go and see what's been submitted to the MSBA as part of the funding application. Would that answer your response? Respond to your concern, Jonathan? Yeah, I'm sure that I'm sure that would be fine. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to think of like someone who who doesn't know much about the project, maybe has heard about it from the media or from, from folks in town and comes to the site and doesn't necessarily know the construction process or the MSBA process. So quickly building off of what Jonathan said, you, you may wanna have like a, like a key documents, maybe on the homepage or on one of these pages, the key documents that would have the ed plan. And then I also know there's, there's lots of different versions of design that come out at some point. So being able to have like the most current one mm -hmm. that people should be focusing on mm -hmm. um, might be a, a good way to go. So maybe have the sort of the latest thing that has that is also in a folder, the latest presentation linked right on the on the landing page. That's what I'm hearing. Paul. So, um, oh. Carolyn, I think you worked with Brianna and um, folks at the school in terms of this, I hope. Um, one of the things I was wondering about, so our next big milestone is going to be a debt exclusion override. Um, that's a vote of the people. And I'm wondering if we should have a section here about the need, why it's necessary. And right now we're focused totally on the project and like it's moving forward, like we're almost in the construction process, but we are going to be needing a vote of the public. And I think a lot of public, I think Jonathan's right, people are going to walk into this and say, I've heard about this. I have really I have no idea why you're bringing this up because there's a long history to this. And I know we don't want to clutter this up and maybe there's a link to someplace else, but it might be something we want to think about in terms of how this plays into, you know, when someone learns about it and they're being asked to vote on this maybe a year from now, um, they're going to say, well, I, I want to learn more. So I wonder if, what folks' reaction to that is. So, Paul, um, just thinking about the FAQ um, could could have a dedicated, you know, how, you know, something, how are we going to pay for this? So were you yeah, thinking? I was, I was, yeah, I was thinking more about the need. Why, why, no, why are we? No, the, why do we need to do, why can't we just, right. pay, you know, why do we need to do that? Yeah. Yeah. And I think you're right on the financing that would come, whether it's on this site or not, I'm not sure, but um, that's definitely will be something that we'll have to build out at some point or add in. Mm -hmm. Can I just build both on that comment, but on milestones, I thought when uh, Jonathan was saying a layperson, to the extent 
there is a buzz right now. People are saying, where is it going to be built? Is it going to be, is it on the Wildwood side? Is it on the Port River side? Is, and, I, and that's a milestone. So trying the designer product, it may be on the homepage, Margaret, just on a where are we now? And mm -hmm. one of the things that would be specific to Amherst is we have, that's a key choice. Um, and if there then is something, I don't know how you cross link. There, we will have information on um, this site versus that site. So it could be if you said, where are we now? And you clicked on it, you would get over to the presentation on uh, any information we have on it, just uh, making it really easy. So forming the project team, feasibility study, schematic, you know, we've got a specific for our project, not just the MSBA. So. Mm -hmm. So people can just find things easily. That's that's my main, that they don't have to figure out, is that under project design? Probably, but um, how else do I do it? Um, mm -hmm. Sounds like we almost need a, a timeline page, independent, add an extra page on here. Okay. So Mike, Mike's hand is up also. Yeah, just briefly, um, my recollection of the last time, um, and this is both to check with Margaret, but also for the committee, if I'm accurate to, to know, is that this is, um, it can't be a page of advocacy. It can just be a page of information. If <laughs> there are correct. advocacy groups that form elsewhere, right. they form elsewhere. So I just think it's important to note as we move forward, we all may feel really strongly about this project, but this website is not a place to put uh, anything that could be could be perceived as promotional information. It's, you know, we could list the date of a vote, a future yep. vote. We could list, yep. you know, as, as other people are saying, you know, the benefits of this site versus that site or why we're doing it as Paul was saying, but there, we just gotta be really clean on that. So yep. I just thought it's important to know because it's easy to bleed into um, why we think this should or shouldn't happen, you know, usually should if the building committee, you know, since the building committee site. So I just thought it, at the okay. beginning, it, it's good for everyone to have a sense of what the, the rules are around what can go on it and what, yeah. what other people should do. That's a really good point, Mike. Thanks for bringing that up. So I had another, oh, Phoebe's got her hand up. Yeah, Phoebe. Um, I think that there's a lot of content here that has to go into however we tab this out. Um, is there going to be a basic search so that somebody can type in a word to find what they're looking for um because that may be one of the simplest ways to accomplish that goal we can certainly add that that's a that's an easy thing to add on here to tag out content too so it's easily searchable it can pop up and there can also be a um a site directory too if we want that Okay, and I think if we're going to tag that out, I think we could potentially send a list of like, here are the the top things that we want to be tagged out. So when they they put that in, then these are the things that come up. Um, you know, as opposed to somebody trying to go through all of these things and understand what each of these categories mean, um, because I think there's going to be a lot of people who want some information and don't understand what you know, click on project design and just think they're going to see, you know, designs of buildings. So right. thank you. Um, on project design or the interaction, so sending comments back, we have a website that we've launched this, I guess this year, I'm, I don't know whether it's been up for full year, Sean, Engage Amherst, where projects have gone up and you can do comments on them. Would we put the school building project on that as well? Or would we enable on this? I saw one of these, you know, contact, leave a comment. Would we try to make this the site where we're collecting those and responding to them? Can I answer that, Kathy? Yeah. Um, or weigh in on that. Um, can this site do things like surveys? Um, okay, so I think, the, I mean, the, the major benefit I like about Engage Amherst is it has a lot of tools for uh, public participation. If this site can do that too, then maybe we don't need to use Engage Amherst. Um, we'd want 
we don't want people to get confused where different information is. But um, I think that's the major benefit of engaging Amherst if we do want to do a, a public survey or some of the other tools around different around designs. Um, we'd want to be able to have that available. You can embed um, survey applets into this. Okay. Um, and then in the background, we'll have Google Analytics running so we can see on a heat map which pages are effective and things like that too. But right. from a survey standpoint, yes, we can include that. Right. And then Kathy, can I say one other thing? Yeah. Um, one of the things that the library has done with its building project that we would have to do it maybe a little bit differently, but I thought was really nice is um, they did like these one page uh, flyers on different questions and on different topics and kind of put all the content related to like a certain thing on one page so that people could find it really easily and they could just pull up that one thing to find out the answer to something. We may want to think about that for different topics related to this project as we go through um, putting sort of those one page, you know, it'd be kind of like an FAQ, but um, instead of somebody having to browse an FAQ to find the right question, just a one page sort of topical um, flyer at some point, whether it be on the, the project timeline or on um, design as we get farther into it. Mm -hmm. Rupert. Thank you. Yes, I like what uh, uh, Sean and Phoebe are saying. I'm imagining there's going to be a portion of our population that are going to want to know about energy and carbon footprint and that kind of stuff and trying to get all that information together in one place that's that they could then you know, read or print out or hold or discuss uh, might be really valuable. And, and some of that, just thinking about that one, um, Rupert, we could, we could, Margaret could, who's ever the drafter of these one pages, uh, could start to frame it that the school will be, and then in layman's term, talk about what our net zero bylaw is. And then when we, then we could, we could start that draft already. And then we could add to it when we, we have a designer on board and where they're going with those kinds of choices. And I, I don't know on the, I'm looking at the tabs. I too like the one simple one pagers. It may be the FAQ can be the button, but then you get to it, you can get C1 pagers here, you know, and or just the simple, you know, some kind of uh, easy, easy to find one pagers as we add them um, um, rather than another piece. So will the, when you have presentations, project designs, the background documents. Um, so one example for this would be answer gave a presentation to us when we selected them as OPM. Would that go under presentation and would it be, would, would that go under project design? It's a you know, where, where would we put things so they said, you know, when we first select the designer? So I, what is a I, presentation versus- So what's document. appropriate? So mm -hmm. um, I, so I think it can be really interesting to use the designer presentation for the interview, but you have to play it a little bit by ear in terms of what's discussed in the meeting. I mean, sometimes you end up discussing things in the interview that will feel like red herrings to someone who doesn't have the context. <laughs> but, um, you know, generally I would definitely want the building committee to be able to see the interview uh, link one way or the other. It, you know, interestingly, MSBA doesn't typically record them or share them publicly. So I'll have to ask them whether they're willing to do that. Um, is there certainly public meetings, but unlike you all, they're not in the habit of recording them. Um, other than that, I would say um, design presentations are things that are made outside of the building committee. So obviously the building committee meetings are one set and I think of the presentations as the, as the tab is here on being the things that are um, bringing what's going on to the building committee to the general public. And so we would just have to make it clear 
I mean, th as this starts to get populated, it will become clearer. But I'm thinking that if someone, yeah. it's Phoebe, it's like, where would I go to see that? And the, the, that might be something that was just within the building committee. You'd, you'd go to one place versus the very public presentation that if we, when we do our public meetings. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, for instance, one thing we could do is when there is a public presentation, we could add, you know, for more information on the C building committee meeting on blankety blankety date rather than duplicating stuff all over the place. Press releases. If we have press releases, we had one. Um, and when you were selected, press release would go on the landing page. Um, if it was breaking news and then move to someplace else? Or hey, not? Gee, that, that's a good question. Um, I would probably move them to an FAQ page after. I would put them on the landing page initially. Caroline, what do you think about that? I'd put them on the landing page and then once they had sort of timed out, I'd probably move them to the FAQs. It's however you guys want to slice it, but that can certain we can certainly do it that way. I'm almost thinking it might be a presentation and documents, or I'm not sure how that would get categorized exactly. Okay, I I see three hands up, and I didn't see the order. I see Sean, Phoebe, and Paul's hands. So Sean. <laughs> um. Two things. I like that idea of maybe either changing presentations to documents and then having the presentations um, like header under documents. And then it would kind of be, a, you could put those other things we talked about, whether it be press releases or um, or just other things that come up, uh, post them there. The other thing I was going to say is we may want to consider instead of like the contact tab, we might want to change that to like a get involved tab. And in addition to like the, you know, submit questions to the OPM, we may want to start thinking about laying out the framework for where the um, involvement points are for the public, um, laying that out ahead of time so people start thinking about that. Um, I know we're still early in the process, so it may not be super robust at this point, um, but maybe setting up one of the tabs just on participation with the public and where they'll have opportunities to submit feedback on the project. Um, That's a great idea. Yeah. Phoebe? Um, just briefly, will the meeting agenda and minutes have links to our recorded videos? Well, I'm, so I, I'd like to not get in a situation where we're totally duplicating everything that's already on the town's website, but I'm assuming that what will be posted here is the meeting minutes and the meeting minutes will have the link to the video. Okay. But if you think we should separately post the video link, we can certainly do that. Um, I just want to, I think my, my question sort of revolved around making it as easy as possible. So whatever we can do so that somebody can go, oh, meeting agenda and minutes and click into that and then, you know, hit a button and also get the uh, associated recording. Um, I, I think that uh, transparency is is very big in Amherst right now in general. Um, and so whatever we can do to make everything that's on here sort of simple to use and easy to find and you know, this thing automatically links up with that. I think that's sort of the, the mindset that I'm looking at things in at this point. Um, so that people aren't searching for things that they can't find and then they feel like, you know- It's, it's they okay. Make it easy for me. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, you, I, you're, you're right. One um, of the things- Go ahead. No, Ma Margaret, I think the last minute you did, but what we've done, we started to try to do is in the minutes had the hot link to the video, you know, so that that you'd read the minutes and up at top this was recorded and you could click on that and you could go over to the the video would be an easy way to keep doing it. Um, and then on our website we sort of make it easy. Um, I, I Phoebe I can't see whether you're talking but sorry yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, Margaret, I didn't mean to cut you off. Sorry. Oh, no. Um, yeah, I mean, I th yeah, it's, it's sort of a preference thing. I mean, some people would rather scroll through some minutes and some people would rather watch a video link. So maybe we should look at actually posting them separately from the minutes. But let me think we about that always, a little bit. And we can always link it directly to the town's page. So it's not separate. It's not duplicating it, but it would, we can have the link to the minutes and we can have the link to the video on the same little box. Yeah. So that's pretty easy to set up. Paul? Yeah, so I think these are a lot of good ideas. <clears throat> I would suggest that Caroline really work with um, um, Brianna Sunred, our communications manager who manages our website. And, you know, she's already addressed these types of questions on our own website and sort of being consistent and then whether it should be linked or posted, all those things they could, I think at that technical level, they can figure that out and then come back and say, how does this look? And I think, you know, Phoebe's point about saying we want the, ultimate transparency um, is a really good sort of operating principle um, as they start to develop. But I, you know, I think, you know, you know, I know, so I just think that a lot of these comments will um, come through as they start working at it at the staff level. I'm looking, any other comments? Um, the launch of this, Margaret, so you, you're getting all these comments. Um, what, mm -hmm. is your, what is your thinking on when, when content timing of adding content and then opening up the page? Well, I think we definitely want it to be fully up and functional by the time the designer is on board, which isn't it right now. You know, I think we're anticipating it to be the 16th well, the designer selection to be complete, I should say, probably not say on board. Um, I, I think there is, I certainly wouldn't probably put it up before the second, but I think once we're sort of, um, you know, people aren't sort of focused on the election, which is probably taking up a fair amount of, um, spit airwaves these days that, you know, shortly after that would be a good time to sort of put something up and have people be aware that the process is moving along. Does anyone have any thoughts? I mean, the, the MSBA meeting that goes from the shortlist to the finalists is the 16th. Um, so getting this open before that or getting it open to coincide with that, I mean, I don't, you know, my, I guess my only personal preference would be making sure we have enough content on it that it's not frustrating when you open it up, that you think yeah. you're gonna find things. Um, Paul? Yeah, I, I think coinciding with that decision by the MSBA as to the, the architect would be a good time to launch and because it's a reason to say something out loud to the community and we say and we have a new website available and we would do the town would do, be doing a press release on it so we could also point the people to the fact that go here for all the you know where we are and by then we'll have we'll we have the beginning of a timeline moving forward you know um yep And the, the only caveat I'll make is that um, I, I think the, there's selecting the designer and then there's an ag agreeing on a fee. I mean, it's, it's very rare, but occasionally the, top, the, the municipality can't come to agreement with the top ranked firm and then they're allowed to go the second. Um, it usually takes a few days so um, I think in the timeline we're going to look at this morning, I would basically say we should, once the, there's a fee agreement in principle and they've been given a notice to proceed, that would be the moment for the um, press release and the rollout of the web page. Phoebe? Sorry, a little off topic at this point. I just also wanted to say, 
Um, the other thing that I think is going to be really important is that people understand everything they're reading. So if somebody doesn't know what an RFS is, you know, what does that mean? We have to ensure yeah. that people understand all of these things. So any way that we can get to that point. Not, not be an acronym, Hal. <laughs> I'm with you, Phoebe. I'm always the first person to say I have no idea what that acronym is. <laughs> Any, any other comments? Um, you know, I, th I think if we get the link back to what we're seeing here and, it, and some of the suggestions on the tabs, people, everyone has Margaret's uh, email contact. So you can just send any additional comments to her. And we meet again, our next meeting is on November 4th. So we could, see after the interaction with Brianna, the answers to some of the ideas. So some of these tabs, as I heard, we, we changed. So we're still seeing the prototype. So Margaret, we could just come back one more time because that's still going to be by my calendar, at least a good two weeks before this gets launched as a website. Yeah, so. I agree. So any other discussion on the website? If not, we can, if there aren't any, I'm looking around, no, um, we can thank Carol Hine for joining us early in the morning and for giving us this preliminary and move to the next topic. Um, and I, I had asked people to send in if they had any draft interview questions and I got a few. Um, and Margaret had one, and I had one of my own. So these would be, um, Margaret, maybe you can describe, we're not in total control of these interview questions, correct? But we, <laughs> no. you know, in, in other words, we're, we're not, the, we weren't, aren't like you with, with OPM where we drafted them, but we, yeah. but, but we need to have drafts because they'll move, the process will move pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, from where we are now. So I did do um, a, a draft of some of these, um, but I wanted to hear first whether people have some ideas um, on this or I can just show my screen. Okay, I'll just share my screen and let me see whether I can draft interview questions. And while Kathy's putting it up, I'll, I'll just tell you all what I said to Kathy about this is that, so what happens is on the second where they'll do the designer, will do the designer shortlist, the, the, your representatives in partnership with the MSBA designer selection panel. And then usually within a day, um, the MSBA assembles the questions that they want the interviewees to address in the meeting. So it's, you know, they're, they're given 10 or 15 minutes to make a presentation. They're asked to address a few things specifically. Um, it actually might be a little bit longer for the presentation now that I think it might, might be more like 20 minutes. And the MSBA has a set of questions that are, they ask everyone to address. And it has to do with making roles clear, uh, talking about project management. Um, they're, they're good but questions, but they're a little bit, they're not project specific. They do ask like on the afternoon that the short list has been completed, they will say to us, do you have questions that you would like to have considered for the interview? And we will give it to them and they will take some of them, but not all of them. And some of them they might edit. And then the, the questions go out to the interviewees and that's to give them enough time to really prepare well. So um, I just wanna make sure that everybody understands because we give them a question, it may not end up in the interview, but we should, I thought several of the questions that Kathy had offered up were really good ones, so. And I just, um, just as background, two of these came from Allison's Estes. You know, she didn't join us today, but she sent them in. Um, the one about uh, small group instruction spaces and storage needs, both came from her. So Paul. Yeah, it seems like two and four both talk about daylighting. Um, 
it's almost like duplications almost. Um, and I guess what I would want to see is a question about um, the greenest building possible. Like we want to be net zero and I don't know if that, um, I mean, I think that's where we're going to be possibly different than other projects is, is that we're going to be, we want to be net zero and having them address that explicitly. I think that's a really good point. Um, so I, I wrote down greenest building possible. So jo Jonathan, do you want to build on that? <laughs> as a Yeah, I, I might, I, you know, one way I might uh, uh, suggest framing the, the green question is, you know, how, how do we get, how do we meet our bylaw and get the uh, greenest building possible and uh, stay within a budget <laughs> or something like that, you know, because it's, it's going to be a balancing act. We have to meet a certain criteria. We want to do a green building, um, but we, we are going to have budget constraints um, and we'll, we'll be tackling those for, for a long time to come. Um, and then if I could just quickly add, uh, I don't have an, an issue necessarily with any of these particular questions. I just think this is an opportunity for us to go back to to when we were thinking about our two um, kind of solicitations, both for the OPM and for the architect, about the things that are important to us as a community. I think we want to make sure we get those those questions or those issues into a question, um, and if necessary, you know, uh, uh, you know, kind of put the ones we feel are most important up the top or something like that, so that that the MSBA gets a notion of what we consider important. Now, whether they present that question is not up to us, but at least we'll get the, at least we can try. Okay, so Jonathan, were there specifics on the OPM ones? Um, I, I have the list of what we asked. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I think we wanna know, obviously the, the, the green building net zero one is important. Um, I don't know quite how to frame it, but we, you know, and but we've had some discussion about how certain candidates did or did not, you know, well understand our community. Um, you know, I don't know that I can frame that question really well, but I think right. it would be good to have a question that said, you know, how how are you going to approach our diverse community in in some more eloquent way than that? Okay, Rupert. Yeah, along Jonathan's lines, um, I think um, there's a there's a trade off and a balancing act that happens between um, uh, maintainability and our long term costs versus initial cost and operating costs, and especially in super green buildings, uh, a lot of designers like to throw a boatload of technology um, that's difficult to manage long term. So it'd be interesting to me to have them address that kind of a question. And should would Rupert, would you put it in this question six and and um, keep and keep maintenance costs low or something like here or would you make it a separate question? Uh, I would start it with a second separate question and then see if we want to merge them. Okay. But um, just so that because sometimes if you put too much in a question, you only get an answer to the part they want to answer. Yeah. Right. I, I think the a way to frame that question, Kathy, would be to say, um, how do you strike the balance between the technology that makes green or net zero buildings functional and the maintenance budget of Public school districts. Thank you. That's what I'm. Yeah. Thank what you. Rupert is saying. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a great question, and I think that, I think if I had to pick one of the questions, the MSBA will pick. That's one of the questions. They <laughs> will be very interested in that question. Yeah. I, I mean, if you want, you can throw in language like lifetime costs versus other costs uh, to try to get their a sense of the designers. Sort of concept of, of not only you know how the building operates net zero but what was the the energy cost and the footprint of creating that and maintaining it and disposing of it right. um, as a whole nother layer possible 
And Kathy, you might change where I said functional. I would probably rephrase that to say net make net zero a reality in the maintenance budget. There we go. And Jonathan, I do have yours, it, this number seven on a demographic. So I just have to figure out how to word that. Um, you know. And Paul, you um, you suggested on two, two and um, the one on daylining, it does do daylining. The different, the one difference on two, and I'll just speak to Allison. I think she was also um, wanting to make sure we have small group instructional spaces. So it's got two concepts in there. You know, so we want classrooms, but we this notion of, and Jonathan, I know we, we did this in our goals to where everyone, we did that we want some flexible spaces. We want don't just want classrooms, but we want breakout rooms. Um, so maybe we can reframe two to be about the small group flexible spaces and have just one on daylighting. Mike, sorry, I didn't see your hand up. Oh, no, thank you. So I think these are great. And the other thing I'm thinking about is what, what interview question, you know, describes some of the uniqueness of this particular project. And um, for me, the, it's a project following up on a failed project, right? A project that didn't, didn't come to, res, uh, to conclusion. I'd be curious about how uh, designers talk about their experiences, if they've had any, of uh, coming in after there's been a project that, that wasn't completed um, and how to re-engage the community, how that feels different than, you know, a more typical project, which doesn't have that history. So I do think that's, you know, people have different views on it, I'm sure, but rightfully or wrongfully, that is our history in Amherst, that we had a project that did not uh, come to fruition. And I'd be really, I don't think that's the normal question MSBA would ask because it's not the typical um, situation. I think it really is going to matter to see how an architect's um, how our firms uh, responds to that somewhat unique context that we have. I don't know how to word it at all, Kathy, so I apologize, okay. but- um, Yeah, no, just, no, I'm, I'm just, do, you new failed project and I'll come up with some wording and we can wordsmith it till it makes sense. I think at least one of the, the firms noted that they had had a project that was that they had to come back to so so if they haven't had that they're going to have to speculate <laughs> yeah. anyone anyone else you know i can send we can try to with this we have to do everything in public but we can uh, try to wordsmith these and get them back to you um so that we and then you can just send me any comments on them. So I'll be just the receipt of them. That's within our, um, to, especially for this thing about the unique demographics, how would they design failed project that to, and nine is probably more than enough um, for us to, to have. And Jonathan, your suggestion I think was right that we should order them with the ones we should make number one, the one we would like most to have, you know, so that they only take some, so to have them in, um, if we think they're all important, but still do some doing. So I will feed this back to you if that makes sense to everyone and just send it out as a Word document and then just get comments back to me. Once we've got two placeholders here um, that aren't worded. The, the one other one that I thought of, but I saw that we, we did do a, a good job on the request for the proposals on talking about space that is designed for elementary school, but can also be used by the community. And it's space that can be used, be two first. So we, we had groups talking about cafeterias with a stage, which could also be the music room you know, or a library that could be a community library. I don't know whether we need to separately ask that because it looked to me like we got most of the designers who were responding to talk about it. 
But if anybody thinks that, you know, we, you know, it's a goal so we can lock the rest of the school and people from the community can still be using it. Okay, so, you know, this is a lot to do um, just looking at a screen. So is, is that, does that work for everyone that I send this document back to you? Um, and, you know, with Margaret's help, I can get those, maybe get those two questions and the di consolidate the daylighting questions. So there's only one, get the two questions that are just placeholders right now written. And then everyone who thought about them can look at them and just send back comments. And um, we only need them by Margaret, we, the MSBA meeting is on the second, and you said they might roll right away into the questions. So we, we just need them by that date, um, correct? Yeah, I mean, typically we do the, you do the interview, you do these, the, the short list, and then within a, a couple of hours of the meeting closing, we'll get an email asking for interview questions. Okay. And I don't believe they'd give you more than a 24 hour turnaround because they're trying to get the questions back to the designers quickly so that they can prepare for the interview. Okay, so I will, today is the 21st. So I'll get this back at the latest Monday, you know, potentially by tomorrow if Margaret has time. And then mm -hmm. if people can commit to getting any kind of responses back um, by uh, the 29th or the 1st of November. Okay, so you have a week to just look at it. And if other ideas come on, they go on the list. So we'll just have um, group, group think rather than group wordsmithing. Um, all right, I'm seeing nodding heads. So I think we can, uh, I can unshare my screen and uh, how do I get unpause share? Stop. Okay, I have to figure out how to unshare my screen. Stop sharing. I don't want to stop share. All right. I don't know how to do that. Let me just make this small. Stop share. Stop share. There it is. Ta da. Yeah, no, the, the, your faces were covering up the stop share, <laughs> the stop share button. <laughs> I hate it when that happens. <laughs> so, so the, the next item on the agenda is Margaret has um, put together a potential timeline for us on meeting. Um, and, and as she pulls up, it's a messy, messy, you know, complicated, because <laughs> one of the things we thought of is there need to be some public meetings. So none of them have dates right now. Um, yeah. And, and when the designer comes on, this will be firmed up, but trying to at least identify um, things. And after this meeting, we will share the timeline with you, you know, it's it, because it's Excel to take a look at it. And that just as you go to pull it up, one of the things she said to me is that once the designer is on board, you know, we're looking at a November and December that it'll be hard to have very many focused meetings between Thanksgiving and the holidays, but that by January, we're going to be, our time, meeting time will become much more intense, um, you know, again, driven by designer, but that's so planning on, does this time slot still work for everybody? And we're talking to the school committee on at least potentially one joint where everyone meets the designer and, and Paul, we could involve the, the council in it, but, you know, trying to find dates that work for a, a bigger meeting. So I'm going to let Margaret pull this up. Um, yeah. So um, I actually was emailing back and forth with Caroline this morning. God bless her for wanting to be up at the crack of dawn um, and to sort of share this and say, you know, this is this document, we, this is, this is a, a timeline that we need to make into a really legible graphic. So I apologize, you will be like, my head is spinning looking at this. Um, can everybody see this? Can 
Can you all see it? Yes, I'm seeing nodding heads. Okie dokie. So um, I am going to just make a little bit bigger. So the, the nugget here is um, what I was trying to do, and this is based on an earlier iteration I did with Kathy, is to have a chronological timeline that's sort of color coded to different activities. And the, the key, which you quickly start to forget after you get it past the top is here at the top. So yellow stuff is MSBA deadlines. <laughs> urgent, urgent. <laughs> um, blue is building committee meetings. Um, orange is community forums or, or broader community engagement. I, you know, I would like to think, I think the right thing to do here is not to think of the community engagement as being like a single event. I have suggested to Kathy that we think of the community engagement as being a week of multi-valent uh, communication so that someone who doesn't go to a meeting might see something on a website, might see a flyer, might see something. So think of the community forum piece as really community engagement. Um, this color, which isn't showing up very well, is also school committee. Um, and then green is a joint building committee and school committee. And what's not in here is um, as a color is also updates to city council, which I think will also need to meet. So you could, you could also sort of think of these as separate timelines next to each other, but for the purposes of getting started on this, they're just, it's just one long set of milestones in the sequence in which they need to happen, okay? So the other um, kind of key to reviewing this is that we have to make three submittals to the MSBA in order to be lined up for um, an approval. The, the first one is what's called the preliminary design program. And it does not have to be tied the MS, it does not need to go to the MSBA board. It's a staff review, basically. So that one, um, you know, we're that I would say that piece of this project is fairly well advanced because Mike has been taking the previous building program, educational program, and making some edits to it. And I think it will be in pretty good shape when the designer gets on board. That's the first submittal. The second submittal, which you know, I think for this community is the most important one, is what's called the preferred um, preferred schematic report. Sorry, it's the what is it? I always get them confused. The design program preferred schematic. Yeah, the preferred schematic is where you say we've looked at all these options. This is what we think about them. This is the one that's preferred, right? And then the third one is the sort of schematic design presentation, which really determines um, preferred. Oh, sorry, preliminary design program is the one where you've picked community engagement. I'm missing something here. And anyway, there's a schematic design submittal, which is really the basis of cost. Okay, so um, that's interwoven here. And, and it also drives, because each submittal requires the sign off of the school committee and the building committee. And in this case, I believe Paul Bockelman, right, as the town administrator, each submittal has to have all three signatures. You have to know when those are, and then you have to um, uh, be able to get all of those sign offs because there's a piece of paper that goes in with all the signatures. So in the in the bigger picture, what's guiding this layout is those submittals. But um, I haven't tried to assign dates to a lot of these. Once we get beyond the sort of short term, you know, getting to the first of the year, because really, the, it's the designers work. Right. I mean, I, I, there are timelines here. They need to be working with us and saying, this is how long it's going to take me to do this. This is how long it's going to take me to do this. So um, let's just walk through. So for legibility, you know, this piece of it up to 
here basically is in the rear view mirror, right? So there were these things we did for the MSBA. There were, there was a building committee meeting. Um, the school, com Amherst school committee has met. The regional school committee has met. Uh, the district website rollout is actually tomorrow. The new website. And then um, the next big milestone is there's uh, November 2nd is the designer selection panel reviewing the applications. Then on the 4th, because it's blue, building committee gets back together. Um, on the 16th, we have interviews. Then I plugged in you know, a few days, a week, basically, to negotiate the designer contract. Um, somewhere around in here, we're launching the project web page that we talked about this morning. And then it's Thanksgiving, right? So everything screeches to a, fall, a halt. Um, and then we reconvene on December 2nd. We, Kathy and I decided there's no point in trying to do anything the week of Thanksgiving. Yeah, Jonathan is agreeing with me. Well, like Jonathan, you're saying no, but I think you mean yes. <laughs> um, so really, we come back together with the designer for a first meeting in December, in early December. And then um, we're proposing by the 16th, which is about two weeks later, that we meet, have a joint school and building committee meeting to look at the designer presentation of the milestones so that that's where I will, re will really have dates for all of this, because you will see that after this, it says need date, need date, need date, right? But at this point, December 16th, we can hopefully fill in these dates, right? So there you are. Now it's Christmas time. And then we're going to get back together in January with an initial, here's the project, here's the designer. Here's our process, get feedback. And again, <clears throat> I think there should be some kind of a public meeting, but it should be broader than that, right? Um, then I anticipate there will be at least two meetings, uh, committee meetings in January. There could be three depending on this. Um, and then at the end of January, um, because one of the big things that we'll be talking about in January is the beginning of the discussion of the which site. I don't think it will be concluded. I anticipate that this meeting in late January is really saying, here's what we know, here's what we, you know, here's what we, here are, these are observations, right? Um, so then by the end of January, there would be a building committee meeting sort of reflecting on what we heard from the community. In February, um, again, go back and sort of make a, make sure the school committee is on board, right? And then um, also in February, review the education plan and, and vote to authorize the submission, right? So the school committee has to do that, the building committee has to do that, and the town manager has to do that. Um, and so here's the building committee meeting to authorize, here's the submittal. That's our first submittal, okay? So that will have a summary of all the conditions that have been observed. So that's one of the designers' big requirements is summarize everything they've seen. The time, so the timeline for this, the, the program I think is gonna be relatively easy. Typically, it would be several months to do this work. So one of the big questions here is, since we're giving the designers the work that has done be, been done before, how much are they comfortable taking in and how much are they comfortable, do they feel like they need to kind of revisit any of it, right? So could be later than late February, wouldn't be earlier on that basis, okay? So now we're really starting to talk about um, what is in the preferred schematic, which is now we're looking at the different options, renovation. Well, we're looking at the two sites and we're looking at the different options, uh, renovate, add reno and new, 
right? And then there's a whole, basically a slew, I'm not even gonna go into any of the detail, but I'm gonna basically say, there's a whole slew of meetings potentially ending in April, late April, where we kind of settle. So we have all of March, most of April to process all of that stuff. And this is where it starts to get a little tricky because I honestly think it would be great if we had a little more time. But when you look at the MSBA schedule for when we need to be making these submittals, um, we actually, in order to hit the next MSBA board meeting and get their approval, we have to, the, the next coming update for that is May 4th. And if we miss May 4th, we can't get to that step for two more months. So Margaret, again, Margaret, would you just say that again? So there's the May 4th date and then yeah. two more months would be June 4th, July 4th. So there it would be July. Yeah, hang on just a second. It, it might I think you have it, Do you have it way down at the bottom, the other MSBA? Yeah, so it's it sort of becomes cumulative, essentially. Um, let me just see if I can pull up here um, something else. I, I shouldn't be the only one. I'm, I'm just, other people should ask questions too. I'm just trying to think through how much has to be done by May 4th. And if we can't get it all done with these community meetings, what's the next date? So that, that was just my question on that yellow one. Right. Um, yeah, you know what? Oh, here we go. I got it. Give me one second. So... This is, um, can everybody see what I just pulled up in front of the other thing? This is, um, this is what we kind of live or die by <laughs> in terms of submittal. So also color coded just to be really confusing, not the same colors, but the way this works is the dark, this is the MSBA board agenda that I just opened from the website. So the dark blue is board meetings and the green is submission deadlines. So what you can see here is there is a board meeting in June and the submission deadline is six months earlier. The next board meeting, because they're not meeting in July and August this year is September 1st. And the submission date is August 31st. This is a long gap between um, uh, between submissions. So, um, so actually there's a June 27th submission for an August 31st date. And then there's a September 1st submission for an October 26th date. And then the last one is there's an October 27th for a December 20, 21st date. So that's what I'm sort of toggling around here, um, in order to, um, Get this. So again, this this is is a scramble if we shoot for making the May 4th submittal for June 22nd. But just to sort of carry on with the thoughts. So um, then at that point, you've basically said, now we have picked an option. Um, we believe it is the right option. We're going to direct the designer to proceed with the detailed the schematic design for the project. And this is the part that I'm honestly most uncomfortable with now in terms of timeline, because then again, there's a sequence of building committee, community engagement meetings and votes culminating with June 27th submittal um, for an August 31st board meeting that's too fast <laughs> for what needs to happen here because the schematic design um, process, you, you're really depending on the team to get the cost of the project right. And you do not want to cut this too short. So I, I did this just to look at the fastest possible. But if I were <laughs> the designers, I would say, no, that's a bad idea. And I would agree with them. So the alternatives are, 
if we can get to May 4th for the start of the, of the schematic design submittal, then the next, we have the options of submitting September 1st, which I think would be fine, um, which would get us to the October 26th board meeting or submitting the 27th for December 21st. The problem with the second one is I think we probably need to have the value in hand for the purposes of the debt exclusion vote um, a little sooner than mid-October. Paul, when would you say that date might be? Yeah, that, that, that's been my, that's my question is, um, you know, if, if they're going to go for a November vote, um, which would be on a current, uh, an election uh, already election happening, they could call a special election for this, obviously, but mm -hmm. the drive would be to have it in November um, for a lot of different reasons. Um, so I think, you know, just for publicity and everything, you'd want a couple months in advance of that. Right. So I think what we probably want to shoot for, if, if you think, so in this version, um, with a September 1st submittal, um, we would have the costs in hand that we were giving to the MSBA by August. So I, I see both Sean and Jonathan and Paul, all three. So why don't we take a pause, Margaret and Sean? I think yours seems to have gone up first. Yeah. Jonathan was first. You can go first. Jonathan, Jonathan. Jonathan go for it. Okay. <laughs> two two uh, somewhat unrelated ones, but I'll, I'll touch on first exactly what Margaret was saying. Yeah, I, I, the, the May 4th, June, and then June, that, that seems like an to me. Um, the, the pure cost estimating will take three to four weeks in there. But even even the rest of it, it's pretty aggressive. You know, there's a lot of work for the designer, the community, the committee to get done between, you know, between, what is it, is it, uh, you know, January and, and May. Um, yeah. I'm not saying we can't do it, but I just, from my perspective, I can see the it's fairly aggressive. I would like us to hit that. Um, but those community engagement weeks, as you've called them, are going to be very important. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and they, you know, a lot has to get done <laughs> in what seems to me to be a relatively short time. Um, the, the other thing, not to be answered today, but at some point we need to sit down and kind of have a dedicated time to think about what those community engagement um, things are going to be, what they're going to be like. Um, while I've loved having these online meetings for, for convenience, um, I, I think at some point we need, we're gonna need to have some live engaged people in a room. Um, yeah. I yep. think to build engagement and I'll just stop my comment there because there's, a, there's we could spend an hour on just those kind of topics. Right, well, and Jonathan, I agree with you. And that's why I think the very first task in of the very first meeting is to talk about that in tandem with what's the time when the designer's on board with in tandem with the designer and the whole. So that's why September, December 2nd would be that conversation. And then we would take it to the school committee. Yeah, I mean, Presumably, the designer might be fine with it, but I, I'm just, I'm just as, not, as much nervous about what we have to do as a community there too. I but totally, I, I like totally agree. Yeah, totally agree. So, so I hope that isn't completely illegible. Carolyn and I are gonna try and make something that's a little more graphically engaging, but this is really, I did this to get my own ducks in a row about what had to happen between what and make sure, you know, that, that you understood that every time, you know, we make one of these submittals, we have votes associated with it, right? And estimate, I mean, there's like, you have to sort of put together a submittal, including estimates for each stage that become kind of increasingly detailed and then um, share them, have people, you know, share them, then come back and say, can you, do you want to vote on them now? I mean, there's nothing worse than putting very complicated documents in front of a committee and saying, so by the way, I need a vote from you today. We do not want to do that. Sean. So my comments were very similar to Jonathan's, which um, I think we should probably start ramping up um, the community to be prepared for this, to, you know, that this six month kind of sprint is gonna happen and there's gonna be a lot of engagement 
and we should start thinking about now. I know we don't have dates, but we should you know start making people aware that this is coming up, um, and think about the strategies we're going to use to 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 work with people. Um, I know the designer will dictate some of that, but I think we want to definitely give people as many people in this broad of group of people a, a heads up that there's going to be a lot of engagement coming up in the next six months or so. Um, so I, I have a just a question on this, um, Jonathan. You were suggesting a dedicated meeting. We're, we've talked about meeting on November fourth. Does uh, we could meet November eighteenth and have it just be not well. We'll know at least the negotiation, but we could just have our group say how do we think we might want to do this or um, be pre-designer. You know, we know our community. Are we talking about? We have districts, uh, districts councils doing meeting. What are we gonna do with the school committee? What do we do at the school level um, with the parent? The parent. So we could have that before, the before we're meeting with the designer. So we just think of what are the people oriented kinds of things we could be doing. So, yeah, so Paul, so that's just an idea on one more meeting in November where it's yep. just us without an outsider. So Paul? I have three, three thoughts on that. One, uh, it could be that we, could, we may want to create a subcommittee of a, you know, two or three people to work on the outreach piece because you don't need, it's hard enough to, for us to get a quorum. Not everybody's interested in that part of it. Maybe there are two or three people who would like to be delegated. It would still have to be a publicly posted meeting, of course, but that's one one tool, one technique to lessen the load on everybody. Um, the second thing is, um, I think it would be really good to have a time frame. I think what Sean is saying and, and Jonathan about letting the public know how this, where we are, a, sort of a generalized time frame. Like mm -hmm. we expect to have a designer on board by November. We expect the com uh, the community to be engaged during February and March. And please, you know, we're ex and we expect to have a you know whatever it is by certain dates, sort of just big broad things, so people could say, well, when is this coming up? Um, and then the third thing was. Um, when do we make the decision about the site and who ultimately makes that decision? Because we're, th those are, those have, and, 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 the, and along those lines, do we only have to look at two different um, options? Well, uh, you can look as many as, as many options as you want. Um, but but as, does MSBA require at least three or do, are they fine with two? No, I mean, for sites there, I mean, most communities are only looking at one site. So you have a situation where you have, you know, two, two logical sites. Mm -hmm. um, and I think not, uh, not other options that are sort of real contenders at the moment. So um, to answer the question about where um, it is going to, so when you make this submittal, which is in mid to late February, you outline what you're gonna look at in the next step, right? Mm -hmm. Then in the next submittal, you say, okay, now we looked at all of them and this is what we learned and including estimated costs of both, you know, the site options. If you're looking, if you decide here, you're only gonna look at one of the two sites, you say that. If you wanna keep two sites on the table, you say that. Here, you are now looking at two sites if two are on the table, plus reno, add reno, new. And there, and there may be variations. Sometimes there are you know, variations. The, I think the thing that's probably most common is different variations of addition renovation. So, you know, like what you did with TSKP at Fort River, where there were like, I don't know, six different iterations of that. So, so um, I'm not recommending that many options here because it's a lot. Right. So ultimately, if the town council, I'm assuming the town council is the ultimate decider on where this new school is going to go and correct me if I'm wrong on that A and then B, we need to pl plug that in for the council so they have opportunity to review the options and make a decision in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. So um, that's where I would like to see that overlaid on this mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. And, and well, I'm not sure. I mean, school committee is going to want to weigh in as well, I know. So, yeah. Yeah, Mike. 
So uh, two things. One is that I will have to depart. I have a 930 meeting that I have to get to. That's um, not a virtual meeting. But um, on, on the point Paul just talked about, my understanding, and maybe I'm wrong, is that the school building committee, this body, is the one that determines and votes on site as part of the submissions to MSBA. I'm not saying they wouldn't be informed by both the town council, the school committee, and the community. Mm -hmm. um, but Margaret, if I'm wrong, please, please jump in. I'm happy to be uh, corrected. But, you know, my understanding from the last one is that town councils kind of, other than um, feedback and... Um, thoughts would be around the use of the building that's vacated in that scenario, not on which site gets used. I'm not suggesting that they shouldn't be, have feedback. It has yep. large implications, but the actual, the decision, I just, it's good for the people in this group to know that which decision yep. they're making. So that's a good point, Mike. So we should plug that in here. When does the MS, when does this build this body make that decision so that, you know, Mike and I can go back to our respective boards and say, here's what we're doing. Cause you know, they're the elected leaders. So I think that they're going to want to have an and, opinion. And, and could we also, Margaret, could we get clarity? Maybe you can just ask MSBA. So Paul, you were assuming that it had to have a council vote. I mean, this is, this is publicly owned land, you know, so normally we talk about how we use it. So just, is it the school building committee with, of course, in, informing the council, or do we need a council vote? I just, I think it's important that we know that. Well, so I can tell you what the MSBA is looking for. They are looking for, again, the three signatures. So school committee has to sign, the building committee has to sign. And I agree with Mike's comment, the general, they consider the building committee to be the arbiter. However, by virtue of asking the person who is signing the contract, which is Paul, the construction contract to mm -hmm. sign, by implication, Paul is being directed by the council. Actually, that's not true. No? No. Oh, okay. The executive is independent of the council. Oh, okay. So um, I would say the MSBA expects that the town council is in the loop and in concurrence, but they're not looking yeah. for a vote from them. Okay, that's good to know. Okay. Yep. And I'll no, just maybe that, mention this. That, that matters a lot, Margaret, because it the, does. Way we do vote, the way we do votes, we have to do a first reading, a second reading. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh so yeah. Mike. Yeah, just briefly, and then I, I really will have to run. I think it may make sense. Um, and I don't mean bad. Like, these people say politically, and, and I'm not referring to the bad politics that people often refer to, but just for critical stakeholders like the school committee and the town yeah. council to receive a report probably from the architect along with the building committee about the site selection, be able to ask questions, yeah. even if they don't have a vote. I just think, um, and it's not just optics, they're elected to represent their constituents. They yeah. should have their voice heard at a different level because they've won an election to be able to do that. And I think that feedback can inform the building committee. And that way, at least everybody, there's clarity on process to go back to Phoebe's point, you know, in the transparency piece. Absolutely. Right. You know, I so hope you all have a lovely day. Enjoy the <laughs> unusual seven degree warmth and I will see everyone soon. And I agree with Mike on that too. I mean, obviously yeah, too. And, and that's trying to build this in, you know, so I wasn't saying that the council wouldn't have a full discussion on it. And then we just do, do we do them as three separate meetings? Do we do them as a combined meeting? What's what and people's uh, tolerance for meetings? Um, so some of us have to be in all of those. Um, Kathy, we're still good with quorum, right? With seven? Yeah, we are good for okay. quorum because we, we have, um, Sean, you said we do have one invoice. So I just want to see we're good with quorum as long as we don't lose anybody um, yeah, right and now. And I've got some time limitations, so we should do what's essential right now. So let's do what's essential. And um, we have a, uh, let me just see whether we have two, we have two attendees. So I also want to make sure we ask for public comments. So Sean, are we good to move off the timeline? And Margaret will send this out, I think, with whatever additional annotations so we understand the, those MSBA dates on them. Margaret. Mm -hmm. And again, I think Carolyn and I are going to try and make it into a schedule where there's MSBA and the, so everybody understands the governing line and then there's the community line and there's design line. 
So we'll make something that is a little, not quite so dense. Okay, Sean. Um, okay, I'm just gonna share my screen quickly. So we have the September invoice from Answer that has Margaret's time. And then Michelle, I believe was the um, consultant who helped evaluate the um, RFP proposals at the last meeting. Um, so the yeah. total for this invoice is 6,369. Yeah, it's funny when we got this, I was like, who is Michelle Potter? <laughs> because I don't like know her as Shelly, but that's Shelly. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I move to approve. Second. I second it. Um, I need to put it to a vote unless there are any comments. Okay, so um, I will call on Sean. Yes. Kathy is yes. a yes. Paul? Yes. Margaret? Oh, Margaret doesn't get to vote on anything. Well, Margaret doesn't get to vote on your own. I don't get to vote on my invoice. John, thank you. John, happy Hans. to do it, but no. Yes. Ben? Yes. Rupert? Yes. And Phoebe? Yes. Okay, the vote is unanimous, uh, unanimous of one, two, three of the people who remain. Um, one, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven, seven of us. So I, I will we'll have the tape so we can have the minutes reflect this. Um, I do wanna take time for public comments and just if, unless there's anything else, we are meeting on November 4th is the next meeting. And um, if people wanna have, I like Paul's idea of a subcommittee for outreach. And Paul, the one question I had is, could we also put other people on that, at least informally? So it's not just a subcommittee of our group. And we can talk about that um, maybe quickly later, not now. I'd also like to suggest we might want to call it a working group. A working group, yeah. So it doesn't have to be just a sub. That That's probably a good way of doing it. Okay, so I am turning it, opening it to public comments. And I do see one uh, person, uh, Bruce. So I'm going to, Bruce, I'm going to allow you to talk. You are now part of us. Hi, Bruce. Welcome. And you have to unmute. I just did. Um, lots, uh, again, uh, very impressed with the whole uh, proceedings and so forth. And so I have one question or comment, very particular. Um, it relates to the uh, questions, the proposed questions that you're submitting and thinking and deliberating on. Um, perhaps not surprisingly, my uh, suggestion relates to the daylighting question. Um, I wonder whether you wouldn't consider or whether it's appropriate to consider sharpening that question um, in something like the following way. Uh, could you say, if we were to consider requiring the highest level of daylighting um, per the, uh, the CHIPS or LEED uh, standards, which is a very specific, uh, by the way, uh, um, a measurable objective. Then the question, what would be your approach? In other words, sharpening the question by uh, prefacing it with a context of the highest uh, um, level that is uh, currently discussed as, as, a, as a measurable objective in daylighting. I, it seemed to me that it would be interesting to sharpen at least one of those questions so it was quite pointed and then see what uh, the people say. I can imagine all sorts of answers they might give to that and I can imagine that they would be quite revealing and uh, I don't know whether this uh, interview would be open and I suppose it is because it's a public uh, meeting. I would be very interested personally to uh, listen uh, to the answers to such a sharpened question related to daylighting. I mean, it could be done as well with the uh, zero net energy, but in fact, that question is already sharpened by the fact that there is the bylaw. And so it doesn't have to be uh, stipulated because it's uh, essentially already is. But with daylighting, I, I rather like the idea of uh, prefacing it with uh, a, a, a requirement or a suggested requirement of the highest standard and see what they say, how about how they would go about it. I don't think I need an answer and I'm not sure you can even okay. give me it. No, no, thank you. I wrote it down. So thank you very much. Um, as, as always, it's a very useful a comment. Thank you. 
Congratulations. I think you're doing a wonderful job all the way, by the way. <laughs> Any other uh, of our attendees? No. Um, so I think unless there are other comments or questions, um, the to-do list will be, I will send out these draft interview questions. You get back any or all comments just to me. Um, so I will send them out to everyone. Margaret will simplify um, and take into account the timeline comments that she received. We will meet again on the 4th and at least tentatively have a dedicated meeting on the 18th, if that will work for people, to talk about a working group and approaches and not try to solve that, but just put ideas and then figure out how we set that up. Does that sound good to everybody? Yeah. Great. Thank you all. Thank you for giving us your Thursday mornings and have a good rest of the day. The meeting's adjourned. <laughs>